Hi, our topic for today is about limits and continuity. Objectives. At the end of this lesson, uh, you should be able to evaluate limits of a vector valid function. Okay, by definition, the limit of a vector valid function uh, is defined as follows. So for two-dimensional space, if R is a vector valid function such that R of T is defined as F of Ti plus G of Tj, then the limits of R of T as T approaches A is the limits of the first component F of T as T approaches A times I plus the limits of the second component G of T as T approaches A times J. Um, these limits of R of T exist uh, provided that F and G have limits as T approaches A. Okay, number two, uh, if R is a vector valid function in three-dimensional space defined as R of T is F of Ti plus G of Tj plus H of Tk, then the limits of R of T as T approaches A is the limits of the first component F of T as T approaches A times I plus the limits of the second component G of T as T approaches A times J plus the limits of the third component, H of T, as T approaches A times K. So these limits exist provided that, that uh, the real vector valid, that the real valid function F, G, and H have limits as T approaches A. Okay, as you can see in this illustration, so given this vector valid function R of T and the vector L, so if this uh, vector valid function R of T approaches this vector L as T approaches A, then the length of this uh, vector R of T minus L approaches zero. That is, in symbol, uh, the length of R of T minus L approaches zero as T approaches A. Okay. So this indicates that as T approaches A, R of T approaches the limit L. And for the limit L to exist, it is not necessary that R of A be defined or, or that R of A be equal to L. Okay, our next definition is the continuity of a vector valid function. So a vector valid function R is said to be continuous at the point given by T equals A when the limits of R of T exist as T approaches A and the limits of R of T as T approaches A is the same as the value of the vector valid function at A. So a vector valid function R is continuous on an interval I when it is continuous at every point in the interval. So to show that the vector valid function is continuous, now we have to show that the limits of R of T as T approaches A is the same as the value of the vector valid function at A. Okay, so as an example, discuss the continuity of the vector valid function R of T equals Ti plus Aj plus A squared minus T squared times K at T is equal to zero. So to show that this vector valid function is continuous, now we have to show that the limits of this vector, uh, vector valid function as T approaches zero exists. And also, uh, we have to show that the that R of T is defined at T is equal to zero. And uh, we also need to show that the value of R at T is equal to zero is the same as the limits of R of T as T approaches zero. So if, if that should be the case, then we can say that this vector valid function is continuous at T is equal to zero. Okay, so to evaluate the limits of uh, this uh, vector valid function R of T at T is equal to zero. So we have to uh, take the limits of its component at T is equal, as T approaches zero. So for the first component, we have the limits of T as T approaches zero times I plus the limits of the second component, which is A as, A as T approaches zero times J plus the limits of the third component, which is A squared minus T squared as T approaches zero times k. But to evaluate the limits of the first component, we replace the t variable by 0. 
And uh, since uh, t is 0, so 0 times i is 0. Plus, the limits of the constant a as t approaches 0 is the constant a times, the, times j plus the limits of the third component. And because a squared is constant, so the limits of a squared as t approaches 0 is still a squared. And um, because your t approaches 0, so the limits of t squared is equal to 0. So we have a squared times k. So therefore, the limits of r of t is aj plus a squared times k. Okay, so similarly, to show, uh, we have to show that the value of the vector valid function at t is equal to 0 is the same as the limits of r of t. Okay, so from the depth, from the defined vector valid function, r of t is ti plus aj plus a squared minus t squared k. When we replace all the t variable by 0, so you have r at 0 is 0 times i plus aj plus a squared minus 0 squared times k. So therefore, r of t is um, you have aj plus a squared times k which is also the same as the limits of r of t as t approaches 0. So because this is the same as the value of the function at uh, t is equal to 0, which is aj plus a squared k, so we can therefore conclude that r is continuous at t is equal to 0. And by similar reasoning, you can conclude that the vector valid function, uh, which is given as r, is continuous at all real number values of t. Okay, for each value of a, the curve represented by the vector valid function in example number 5, which is r of t is ti plus aj plus a squared minus t squared times k is a parabola. And this can be obtained from the definition that because the first component is represented by x equals t, the second component is uh, y equals a, and the third component, which is uh, z is equal to a squared minus t squared. Okay, but because uh, a is equal to y, so this can be written as y squared minus the value of t where t is x so this should be x squared okay so this equation obtained is the equation of a parabola so you can think of this uh, parabola as the intersection of the vertical plane y equals a and the hyperbolic paraboloid okay so this is combination of when you cover the second term you have para, uh, parabola opens along the c-axis. But if you cover y squared, so this is parabola opens along the negative side of the c-axis. So in summary, the limits of the vector valid function denoted by R of t in two-dimensional space is the limits of the first component, f of t as t approaches a times i, plus the limits of g of t as t approaches a times j. In the third, um, in three-dimensional space, the limits of r of t as t approaches a is the limits of the first component f of t as t approaches a times i, plus the limits of the second component g of t as t approaches a times j, plus the limits of the third component h of t as t approaches a times k, provided that this um, real valued function f, g, and h have limits as t approaches a.